Well, the Peter Maritzburg High Court has ruled that Princesses Ndombi Zosutu Zulu Duma and her sister Ndando Yengosi Zulu have 15 days to launch a fresh court challenge on the validity of the late Amazulu King's will. Now, Judge Mjabliseni Madondo said the matter regarding the validity does not have any implication on the heir to the throne since the name of Prince Misuzulu does not feature anywhere. Now, joining me for this conversation is one of the applicants, Princess Ndandu Yengosi Zulu, who talks to me from KwaZulu Natal. Uh, Princess Ndandu Yengosi, very good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Can I just ask, uh, start this conversation by asking the question about uh, why you went to court alongside your sister to challenge the validity of the late king's will. Can we get it from the horse's mouth? Uh, yes, Dolly. There's been much speculation as to why we approached the courts with regards to the will. The will was read to the family um, after my father's passing, and the applications we submitted were twofold. Firstly was my mother's application, where the will disputed her in-community civil marriage. It further stated that in-community marriage is foreign to the Zulu culture. And my mother, knowing the marriage that she had with my father and her certificate clearly stating that she was married in community of property, then seeked legal recourse in the courts, seeing that the a will is a legal document. Mm. And then further that with the princess, with my sister and I's application, when we looked at the will, only there was a specific clause in the will that said anybody who contests anything in the will will disinherit. And if that is the case, only my sister and I have disinherited. Mm. But that clause being there, we knew that was not the words of our father. We then seeked legal advice and we sought the expertise of a, a handwriting expert, Mr. Yossi Vesoki, mm. who has over 40 years experience within signature analysis. Yeah. And I won't, I'll never forget what he said after the analysis. He said the only consistency in this will is the inconsistency of my father's signatures. Thereafter, we then submitted an application to the courts to seek relief and suspend the uh, implementation of the will until such time that the will is declared authentic or not. Yeah. And that is the reason why we, we went to the courts. And, and I, further to I listen with interest. I'm sorry to interrupt you there for a moment. I listen with interest in what you are saying, and that is that those words will never be that of your father, that if anyone challenges this will, will disinherit. What would have been the late king's words? The king would have never put a clause like that because I, my father believed that you've got to stand up for what is right. You've got to stand up for what you believe in. So by putting that clause in, is saying to us, my children, when I am gone, you must not talk. And that was not what our father would have said. Yeah. Let me ask you this question then. Do you accept yesterday's uh, judgment in its entirety? Or do you plan to appeal it, uh, particularly as it regards your mother's element? Because that was a very clear dismissal. Um, Tolly, as much as I'd like to have an opinion on the judgment, um, currently my, our legal counsel only received the document yesterday and they are still perusing the document. Once they've perused, we will meet with the team and they will advise us accordingly as to how we move forward on that matter. Yeah. All right. Let's talk the customary issues now, Princess Ndando Yengosi. And that is that as we have read history of uh, the Zulu nation, particularly the Zulu royal family, it does appear that custom dictates that when a king marries a wife whose lobola is paid for, by the Zulu nation, and that first wife then gives birth 
to a son, that first son will automatically become heir to the throne. Is that something that you accept or dispute? Um, only my understanding of custom is a practice that is practiced within a certain group of people, which then gets entrenched in their society. Now, this practice, it's the first time that it's ever happened. Um, if I can elaborate, the Zulu tribe, when, I, when in reference to King Shaga's kingship, was that King Shaga's mother, Queen Nandim Thongo, her father was from a chief. Hmm. Therefore, when he was taking over his kingship, Princess Mgabai motivated that seeing that Queen Nandi comes from a chiefdom, it would be appropriate for King Shaga to take over the throne. Hmm. So now in this is instance, it was within the Zulu tribe. And if I can just let you in, um, Oli, with the Battle of Isandwana in 1879, when the Zulus conquered the British, if then King Kajwayo at the time took a princess from England to be his wife. Mm. We are then saying that princess, if she bears a son, that son would then be the king of the Zulu nation. Now that custom for me is unheard of. Somebody must have just woken up one day and said this is the custom that will apply. If we use that example, what kind of kingdom or monarchy will let its kingdom to be infiltrated through a custom? Therefore, we are saying any that the, the Zulu king could come from anywhere in the world. Mm. That custom does not apply to the Zulu nation. What needs to happen is the family needs to come together, have a meeting, and choose the rightful king to the heir to the throne. But to have a custom dictated to the Zulu nation, which in future will destroy the Zulu nation in two, three de generations, will cease to exist. Let me which ask you, monarchy only in the world does mm, that? Let me ask you this quick follow-up question then. The, the general public, and when I say the general public, I include the Zulu nation. And you'll correct me if I'm wrong here. It appears that they have accepted that Misu Zulu is, quote unquote, to use the words of the judge yesterday, is the undisputed successor to the throne. Is that something that you categorically dispute? Fully, the family has not sat down to conclude on who the Zulu king is. What happened was... My father's will stated that Queen Mandombi would be the successor to the throne. She subsequently appointed Prince Mesuzulu to the throne. Hmm. Now, we have contested the validity of that will, of which we were granted an interdict to suspend any, any goings on with that will. So now, for us to say that when we, the family hasn't met, when a meeting was held on the 14th of May, which did not include all the family members, the queens were not there, majority of the princesses were not there, mm. the king's siblings were not there. So the, the, the Zulu nation has accepted a king which has not been chosen by the family, where the family has not sat in dialogue to discuss the matter of the throne. Princess Tandengo, another direct question to you. Who in your mind, therefore, as the family, who in your mind is the rightful heir to the throne, the Zulu nation? Tony, like I said, um, it is a family decision, and all my brothers are eligible mm. to the throne. And we as a family need to take the responsibility to give the nation a king that carries a vision for the Zulu nation to take it forward a king that understands the economics and dynamics of our country to be able to take it forward. We have not been given that opportunity. We cannot, as the Zulu nation, choose a king because you 
because of age. We cannot choose a king because you come from certain lineage. So the family needs to sit down, sit in dialogue, and discuss, just like it happened with my father. Mm. The Let family us- said there was dialogue until they came with a unified name mm. to say Prince Zuelitini will take the Zulu throne. And it's unfortunate that my brother, Prince Mr. Zulu, has allowed himself to be called Bayete, which in our custom is not allowed because with my father, he was only called Bayete after the coronation on the 3rd of December, 1971. So if we are following custom, Prince Mr. Zulu and the nation allowing him to be hailed Bayete before the coronation is a disservice to the nation. And you bring up the issue of the coronation. I'm going to ask you that in a moment. The one person, Princess Tando Yangosu, who has been firmly on the side of Misuzulu is Prince Mangosutu Butelezi. How would you describe his role during this entire episode? I think with, with Prince Butelezi, him going with like we say with Prince Mr. Zulu. By looking at the king's will, which nominated uh, Queen Mandumbi, which then nominated Prince Mr. Zulu, it was only logical for him to support Prince Mr. Zulu. But we cannot discount the role that Prince Mutelezi has played in the Zulu nation. He's had a, a relationship with my father, and one would have liked that them as the elders would lead in a fair process together to choose a king for the Zulu nation. Last question to you, and it has to do with the coronation of the king of the Zulu nation. The courts yesterday seemed to be opening the way for Prince Misuzulu to be basically confirmed into the throne of the Zulu nation. Is that something that you are willing to accept. I hear you when you say this needs to be discussed, but it would appear that those processes may be well ahead of the discussions that you are seeking. Simply put, are you going to challenge the coronation? Only on that question, I don't believe it's the jurisdiction of the court to choose the king. The, the act clearly says that the family needs to convene a meeting and choose a king for the Zulu throne. So what has subsequently happened is the 14th of May meeting has been perceived as the meeting held by the family, and that is not the case. The court said yesterday, Princess Dandu Yungosi, if, uh, if I remember correctly, that a meeting was held last year, such a meeting that you seem to uh, be alluding to. It did say that it was held last year, and I suppose it had to do with the direct discussions about the heir to the Zulu throne. Uh, funny enough, uh, uh, Koli, on the 7th of May, when the Queen's will was read on national television by advocate Madonzela, which we all witnessed, Prince Misuzulu was already being hailed as Bayete on the 7th of May. Hmm. So that was already concluded. But when, they w- when it was known that we're putting an application on the will, it was then subsequently changed to have a meeting on the 14th, hmm. which I have previously said was not attended by core family members. If anything, if the, the, the register of that meeting has plus minus 90 people, of which only six or seven were core family members of the, of the Zulu royal family. What will your response be to those who say there have been back-to-back meetings of the Zulu royal family, which you have not attended, and I suppose by not attending those meetings then, you would have given um, your right away, so to speak, to voice out who the rightful heir to the throne should have been. And while on that matter, can I simply ask this with interest? Had your late brother, 
Prince Letuktula been alive, would that have been the person to succeed the late king? Who would have been the rightful heir between himself and Prince Misuzu? Um, Godi, like I've said, all my brothers are eligible to the throne. Mm. Um, and we cannot use age, we cannot use certain practices to propel the king's sons to the throne. At the end of the day, the family needs to sit in dialogue and debate these matters and state we've got prince, this prince here, what do we say? We've got this prince here, what do we say? Mm -hmm. Because that's what the family needs to do. And then with regards to the meetings, um, the family, we need to identify and say who has the right to call meetings because if we are being told we are not attending meetings, what are the meetings for? For example, Koli, the meeting on the 14th of May, we were told it was a cleansing ceremony. It was not a meeting that was subsequently convened. We were not told it was that meeting. We were told it was a cleansing ceremony. So the family really needs to find a structure hmm. with the absence of King Guru Zulitini, who held the family together and was our pillar of strength as to how are we going to put structures in place and formalities in place and who has authority to call such meetings so that the nation is not confused. Yeah. Prince Andiankosi, I'm wondering if you have just one more minute and we need to take a short break. If you could just remain exactly where you are because there is one crucial question that I need to put to you. Uh, Princess Andiankosi, let's conclude the conversation. Uh, yesterday in court, your legal representatives, as per the judgment that was being read out, appeared to concede that this application actually had nothing to do with the successor to the Zulu throne, but everything to do with the estate of the king, the wrapping up of the estate of the late king, and in particular, the challenge as to the validity and authenticity of the will. Is that something that you are now going to want to go and challenge in court, the element about the successor to the throne? Um, Koli, it is true with the legal, what if the, the legal team conceding, our applications were never about the throne. Hmm. My mother's application clearly was to request the court to declare her, in civ her civil marriage of in community of property as the marriage that stands. Our application was to get the, to, to assess the king's will, whether it is the authentic will. Mm -hmm. It was never about the throne. All right, let's leave it there. And uh, I thank you very much for your time. Princess Ndandu Yengosi Zulu, and as I've explained, one of the applicants uh, challenging the validity of the will. All right, uh, perhaps as uh, we try and transition, uh, Princess Ndandu Yengosi, are you still there? <laughs> this is quite yes, unusual. Okay, very, very briefly, uh, a question that skips my mind now, and it has to do with the 15 days that was given to you uh, by the judge yesterday. Are you going to stick within that 15, uh, 15 days? With that, I haven't met with the legal team since the judgment was uh, set down yesterday. So once we have met, they will give us a way forward on how we move on the matter. But just one issue with regards to the world, Koli. Um, I have, we've also opened a case with the Hawks. Um, and they are busy with their investigation, and we hope to get findings from that in due course with regards to, to my father's will. And whether or not that will was forged? Yes. Sure. Okay. Thank Besides you very much. Besides the civil matter, there is a criminal matter that's running.